Hi everyone, I'm here today to talk about step three on getting healthy. And I've titled this, Do Your Research, okay? So when we look at health, you've been able to define that for yourself, what does that mean to you? Um, and one of the things when we look at health, a lot of people think of health as in longevity. So that means living a long life. So when we think about this, the, um, Dan Butner from the Blue Zones has done a lot of research on areas around the world where people live a long and healthy life and there's lower rates of disease. So I wanted to go through this with you a little bit. I've been following this for a number of years. And so I think when I talk about doing your research, it's important to see what are the things that really make the difference. So now you've listed all your health problems, but what are the things that are gonna be the key ones that you might wanna focus on? So take these um, for some information and see what you think. So the blue zones are an area around the world where people live the longest. So the key zones, Sardinia, Greece, Costa Rica, Seventh-day Adventists that live in California, and those that live in Okinawa, Japan. So they have the highest rates of centenarians, and so that's somebody that's made it to 100 years old. Wouldn't that be something? But again, when you think about longevity, do you want to live old and be sick? So we want both of those things. We want to live old, but we want to be healthy into those years. So what did they do? So what did the research say about these people that were living to be over 100? So number one, move naturally. We all know the importance of exercise. And I tell people again and again, it doesn't have to be hitting the gym. It doesn't have to be hardcore. Moving, doing something that you like to do, whether you're a farmer and you're outside all time, whether you like to walk, whether you're just in your house and you like to walk the steps, but you need to move. The biggest thing I tell patients when I see them is that if you don't move it, you're gonna lose it. So if you wanna feel good when you're 70, then you need to feel good when you're 60. So if you can't move and walk when you're 60, how do you think that's gonna improve as you age? So think about how you can move naturally. The next one was having a sense of purpose. And you know, many times we know that the world is overwhelmed now with anxiety and depression and stress, but having a purpose in life. So I think COVID has been really a difficult thing for many people now because many have lost their sense of purpose. Many people are home. They're not at work doing something that fulfilled them and that gave them joy. So think about in your life, what is it that gives you a sense of purpose? Is it your work? Is it your being a mom? Is it helping the community? Is it helping out in your church? What is it that gives you a purpose in life? The next one they've termed downshift. So we need to reduce stress. There's no way about it. We have to calm our levels of stress. And as I do my own research above and beyond, I look at stress. I see it as sympathetic, parasympathetic. We need to get our bodies into parasympathetic, which is rest, digest, heal. And the way we do that is to calm our mind and we need to sleep. So think about how you can focus on sleep. Rule number four is the 80% rule. And I love this. So in Japan, they have a rule, and I've heard this before with many cultures, that you only eat until you're full and you eat slowly. Can you imagine how your meal time would be different if you only ate to 80% so that you weren't bloated and completely full, full after the time? And the other rule that you can incorporate into this too is intermittent fasting. So maybe a day a week or a day a month, just taking a day or two when you don't eat and you let your body settle down. So I know, we know now the science really supports this, but think about it, 80% rule. Tip number five, so a plant slant. So in the Butner's, in the zones, they found that people that eat a lot of vegetables do really well as they live to be, and live to be older. So the Seventh-day Adventists are primary vegetarian in their diet. I'm not saying that we all need to be vegetarian, but I think incorporating more vegetables and plants into our diet can be very good for us and has been shown to be part of the Blue Zones. Tip number six, wine at five. So I kind of like this rule because I enjoy red wine, but the secret to red wine and to alcohol is to have wine at five, meaning that you're having wine with friends. You know, when we drink alone and when people drink alone, you know, we're lonely, we're sad, um, we're hungry for something, we want to look for some kind of fulfillment. 
But when you're drinking wine with friends, it's part of that social time. It's a part of fun and it's a part of laughter. And so the people in these countries that are living to be 100, they do, many of them, incorporate alcohol into their lives. But they do it in a social way and they don't do it in excess qualities, quantities. So that's something to think about. The next one is tip number seven, and it is belonging. So, you know, we hear a lot about, you know, kids these days that are getting bullied, and it's because they don't have a sense of belonging. And I think, you know, as our society becomes more dispersed, we don't have our families, you know, the grandparents and the aunts and uncles that were all around. And many people uh, tell me this, you know, that they don't have a sense of belonging. They don't have family support. So think about in your life right now, do you feel like you belong? Is there a group that you're a part of? Maybe it can't be your family, but maybe there's something else like a woman's, uh, a chorus group, a gardening club, uh, a plant club, a walking club, even going to the gym, whatever it might be, but having that sense of belonging. You know, even sometimes a Facebook group can make you feel like you have a sense of belonging, but that's a really important part of longevity. Uh, tip number eight is putting your loved ones first. And this goes a little bit with sense of belonging and what it means is having really good social and family ties. Uh, we know that when people don't have a lot of family connections that they feel lonely and we know that loneliness is a new smoking. So think about the loved ones that you have and making them a part of your life. Again, if it's not your immediate family, then think about Maybe there's other ways that I can reach out into my community. You know, many people love their pets, okay? And you know something, I think pets can really be an important thing in our lives because they are our loved ones. You know, I see in my family now, so my brother loves his horses, okay? Um, and I had dogs before and I loved my dogs as if I'd love my children. And really, they can be an, a really important part of our lives. So think about, are you putting your loved ones first and who do you have in your life that's giving you that sense of love and that sense of belonging? And number nine was the right tribe. So this word tribe has really been, been kind of on the hot front for the past couple of years. So who is your tribe? So your tribe is the people that you hang around with. And we know that you will become like your friends. And that if you look at your five closest friends that are around you, they are influencing you. We know that cognitively our brains actually try to reflect those that are around us. So if you have friends that maybe don't have such healthy habits, then those will actually reflect back on you. So if you wanna think, am I in the right tribe? Look at your friends and think, are these people that are lifting me up? Are these people that are really nourishing me? Or are these maybe friends that are depleting me? Are they draining me? And you know something? It's okay to find another tribe. Um, there's lots of people in the world. You know, we have Facebook access now. So you don't have to just think locally. You can actually think globally. I'm so happy that I'm a part of two really amazing groups. So one of them are friends that I met in Toronto at a motivational conference. And the other are friends that I met out of a group in California. And they're people from all over the world that I'm able to share my ideas about, you know, for medicine, uh, for motivation, for promoting health and longevity. And I, it's wonderful that I'm able to connect with that tribe. So remember, it doesn't have to be just in the region that you are. So I'm gonna do a brief recap. Okay, top seven tips for health and longevity. Move naturally, have purpose, downshift, 80% rule, have a plant slant, have your wine at five, um, have a sense of belonging, put your loved one first, and become part of the right tribe. And if your tribe, you want it to be with me, then that's fine. So continue following me along, and each day I'm going to share with you um, some more steps for how you can get healthier every day. Nice to see you all. Good night.